Sometimes you need to set up firewalls on your Linux device. And Firewall D is a great firewall for new users on CentOS Linux. So let's take a look at Firewall D and how it works. First of all, you can take a look at your firewall rules using the firewall dash cmd command. Use dash dash list all. This will tell you what your current firewall rules are. We can see that in my active current firewall, I have the DHCP v6 client and SSH both allowed. That means I can SSH to the service, to the machine, and I can also receive information from my DHCP or from a DHCP server. Okay, if I wanted to add more things, there are lots of options I can do. The firewall CMD command, you can pass the get services option and it'll list all the services it knows about. So you can see that right here, you have all kinds of things. I could run a DNS server, an FTP server, a DHCP server, all these different services. So if I wanted to add something, let's say I wanted to run a web server. So I need the HTTP service and I need the HTTPS service. If I wanted to, I could add those services individually with the firewall CMD add service equals HTTP and HTTPS. Now there is one little problem though. I've added these services to my active firewall. So if I look at the list all command again, I can see them listed, but if I restart my firewall, so that could happen when I restart my machine or anything else. Restart firewall D. If I look at my firewall again, I will see that those services are no longer there. So every time you want something to be permanent, you need to make sure you add the permanent option as well. So I could do add service HTTP dash s permanent and HTTPS dash dash permanent. This will make it so they're in my permanent, well, configuration file. But the thing is that at this point, if I list the firewall rules, they don't show up. And the reason they don't show up is because they're just in the configuration files. And once I restart the firewall, they'll be there. So I could just restart the firewall right now, and then they'd be in my active configuration. And you can see that now I have the services listed and they are there. So those can get through. Now, where is that file? Where is that information stored? If I look in the etc firewall D directory, I can see that there's a bunch of information in here. And one of these things I can see is there is a zones directory. So if I take a look in the zones directory, I can see there's a public.xml file. So let's take a look at that public.xml file. In that public.xml file, you can see what is listed. This is for everything that's public, for my public outgoing interfaces. And we can see that now I have the DHCP client I have the HTTP service, my HTTPS service, and then the SSH service all listed here. So these are the rules that get loaded up or the services that are loaded up when I start a machine. If I wanted to add a service, well, how do I do that? Let's say I wanted to run a Gopher service and no one runs Gopher. So you don't need to worry about that one being one that you would normally use. But if you all wanted to add this to go for service, I can use the get services and I can see that there is no go for service. These are alphabetically sorted and you can see that there is no go for. So how do I do that? Well, what you can do is you can go over into the user lib firewall D directory. Take a look around, you can see there's a list of services here in the services directory. So I'll go into the services directory, take a look around. 
These files all contain information about services and how they work. So if I cat out the SSH service, you can see this is basically what the XML for the service is. You have a, a short name, you have a description, and you have a protocol listed. All right, so I am going to copy this SSH XML to the Gopher XML and modify it. And then if I go in with Nano and modify the Gopher, Gopher runs on TCP port 70. So I go ahead and erase everything in here, make my nice little empty XML file. That's a lot of text. So this is going to be the Gopher. Gopher. And this is a Gopher service. You can make it much more complex, long one if you want. And this right here is going to be port 70. So this is all we need to do in order to create this Gopher XML file. So I exit out. Now, if I try adding the service right now, it will not work because the service is not known to be there. If I restart the firewall, once again, it will reread the list of services and it will know about them. So I'll restart the firewall. Now, if I look at my list of services, I should see Gopher show up right here. And now I have the option of adding the Gopher service as well. So I can do firewall CMD add service equals Gopher. Now the Gopher service has been added to my active firewall. If I wanted to add it to my permanent firewall as well, I could do dash dash permanent. You get it added there as well. Now, the next time I restart, my Gopher service will be allowed through the firewall and I should be able to be just fine. I know the next thing is you just have to figure out where to find a Gopher server. And I believe that Apache can do that, maybe. All right. So there you have all of your services. What about ports? If you wanted to add a port, you can do that as well. So if I didn't want to add the Gopher service, and create it, I could add the port instead. So I use the, well, let's try firewall, cd, get ports. Well, that doesn't make sense. CMD. There we go. And there's no get ports. If I want to add the port, I can do an add port equals and then I need to tell it what port I want to add when you add a port you want to make sure you start with the port number so if I added a port number 70 TCP then I can add it that way once again if I wanted to make it permanent I could do the dash dash permanent to get it added to the permanent rules when I look at the firewall cmd dash dash list all command, I can see that now I have all the services I've added and I also have the ports I've added. Now what if I want to start removing things? Well, if you want to remove them, you can do firewall cmd dash dash remove port equals 70 dash slash tcp to remove that and if I want to remove a service once again it's firewall dash cmd dash dash remove service equals something like gopher once again if you remove it from the active and not the permanent it will be back when you restart so I make sure you always do the permanent if you want to make sure that it's not there permanently And that's 
how you can do your firewall, adding services, adding ports, creating new services, and a quick little introduction to Firewall D.